Hi, my name is Tim Shields and I am an award-winning landscape photographer and I'm here to talk about your photography and where your photography is at right now. So generally, your photography is going to be in one of two places. Either it is growing or it is stagnant. And if it is stagnant, then there's probably something that is holding you back. I am a photography coach and trainer and I have thousands of students with photography and I have found that photographers generally fall into one of four categories with the type of photography that they like to do and what their goals are. And the first one is that you like to take pictures for social media to grow your Instagram. Uh, the second one is you like to take photos so that you can print them and put them on the wall at home. You're creating your own art for your own purposes. The third category is that you like to enter photo contests or display your work in galleries. And the fourth category are for those who want to make a business out of photography and actually sell your own work. You see, there is a feeling that we get when we are able to create beautiful photos, and that is a feeling of accomplishment. When we receive recognition for our photos, it makes us feel good inside because we are creating art. And when you get recognized for your art, it is a validation. And this is a really good thing. You don't create art so that no one will look at it. You create art to express yourself. And it's a good and healthy thing to be passionate about creating your own art pieces. But I have two warnings for you. There are two things that are going to stop you and prevent you from being able to take beautiful photos every time. Now, photography is a three-step process. In order to take gorgeous photos, you just need to be able to master three things. The first one is compositions. And that is what exactly you are taking the picture of, what you are looking at through the lens of your camera. The second step is camera settings and being able to choose the right camera settings for the situation that you're photographing. And the third one is post-processing and that's the ability to use programs such as Lightroom or Photoshop in order to enhance the photo that you have taken. Now, if you mess up with step number three, the post-processing, it's not a big deal. It's definitely a recoverable error because that photo is sitting on your hard drive and you could reprocess it at any time. But steps one and two, the composition and the camera settings, these can present you with opportunities for fatal errors that will completely ruin the beautiful photo that you were trying to take. And once that opportunity is gone, it's gone forever. You may have had the most beautiful sunset or a gorgeous animal that was in an incredible location, or it's a people shot, pictures of kids doing a super cute thing. And if you don't have the composition and the camera settings perfect, then it is a fatal mistake for that photo and the photo opportunity is gone for good. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this photography workshop is the composition and the camera settings. So let's dive into composition here. Compositions are so incredibly important. It's actually the foundation of every photo. So let me tell you a quick story. I just got back from an amazing trip to Italy and the south of France. And one of the goals of the trip was to be able to capture the lavender fields of the south of France while they were in full bloom in late June, early July. And I was looking for a specific lavender field that had some kind of an interesting element aside from just the beautiful rows of purple lavender. And I happened upon one lavender field that had a very small stone building in the middle of the field. And as soon as I saw that stone building, I knew this was going to be my photo of the trip. And this is because I have an understanding of the rules of composition. And these are some of the things that I teach in my six week long landscape photography masterclass where we take a very deep dive into the essential elements of composition and how important they are and how they lend towards storytelling within a photo.
So when I spotted this field with the one stone building in it, I got out of the car, I walked into the field, and just at that time, the sun went down behind me, there was some angry clouds, and it created kind of a streak in the sky in the direction that I was looking. And I instantly knew that this was going to result in a gorgeous photo. So I positioned myself using a number of the rules of composition, and I was able to take this photo, which I only took probably 10 days ago, and I am very proud of this photo. And it is because of the understanding of the rules of composition that I was able to get this photo on the first try pretty well within 10 minutes of getting out of my car. It has not always been this way for me though. I used to struggle with this issue of composition and with camera settings. I had a full-time job. I enjoyed taking photos as a hobby, but I was never really proud of any of my photos. And things changed for me when I walked into a photography gallery in Las Vegas belonging to Peter Lick who is probably the most famous landscape photographer in the world. And when I walked into his gallery and I saw his gorgeous six foot wide saturated prints, I felt like my photography was terrible. In fact, I felt dejected and somewhat depressed. Deflated would be the word that I was never going to be able to make it. So when I walked out of his gallery, I turned around, I took this photo of the entrance to the gallery, and then I made a vow to myself that I was going to learn everything that I could in order to be able to level up my photography and to be able to take photos that were at least comparable with what Peter Lick was taking. So this set me on a decade long journey of learning and learning and practice and trial and error and failure and the whole process being repeated over and over until finally I started to get attention on social media through my photography and people started contacting me and asking if they could buy my photos. In fact, my very first sale was of this photo of a lavender field in France, different trip of course, and I sold this photo for $1,300 on a six foot wide piece of aluminum. And it was a gorgeous photo. And the way that that made me feel, it was like a validation for all of my hard work and my learning and the toiling in trying to be able to create art that other people would find attractive and appealing. And it felt very good inside to receive that type of validation for the art that I had created. And I know that you can do the same thing. And as an update to the Peter Lick connection, I just received word last week that I am one of three photographers nominated for the title of Fine Art Photographer of the Year. And one of the other photographers, one of the three, is Peter Lick himself. And it feels good. So I would appreciate it. If you found some value out of this video, leave a comment below. Let me know what type of photography you like and what you struggle with with your photography, what you would like to learn about. Now, in the next video, I'm going to be going into detail on camera settings and how you can master your camera settings in a very easy way so that you won't miss out on any photography opportunities like I have so many times in the past. So. Please leave a comment below and I will see you in video number two, which is coming very, very soon.